The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to the Happiness Jungle TV show. I am your guest host, Cami Baker, and I am excited, as I always am. But this time I'm excited because this new friend is also in media, and I was just on his radio show about a week ago, and he was introduced through mutual friends, and this is Ernie Floyd. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here, Cami. Yeah, so share with us how the how the radio got show got started, Unity in the Community. Mm -hmm. Love the name. Thank you very much. It's really in alignment with what I'm all about, so right. talk. Talk to us. Okay. Um, I was just talking to you a little bit earlier about the fact that being here in the studio brings back memories when I first started the organization uh, a little while ago. And so I'm looking around here and I'm like saying, wow, this is where the visions come from. This is where the excitement comes in. This is where the creativity comes from. So I won't go back that far, but I'll go back as far as 2013. The idea of, of internet radio uh, was introduced to me. And so at that time, we were on a hiatus with the organization. I started the organization in 1994, which is Pride Productions, which mm. you can find at pridepro.org. And so then um, we examined it a little bit, decided um, going out investigating what the possibilities, what we could do to reintroduce our organization again. And so um, it, it was a test because of the fact that, and actually it was a challenge as well, because uh, we had some people that will assist us and some people didn't assist us, or we were getting all kinds of different information about how to start an LPFM, they call Low Power FM. And right now, at, or at that particular time, Congress was in the process of either A, um, allowing licenses for nonprofits or churches or schools to apply for those licenses, or and wipe off the board for all the different conglomerates that was log jamming the whole system up. And so uh, in about 2014, the, the window opened up. Uh, our organization, I still had the nonprofit status. We applied for it, and we competed against a college in Worcester. And um, they said to me, well, guess what? There's a college going after it. I said, well, you know something? I don't have endowment money like that. So I said, we probably should just step out. And so at that time, I had an attorney and I had an engineer. He says, no, just go for the ride. We'll see what happens. I was like, oh, we'll see. Uh, no, he says, no, just go for the ride. You'll be fine. I went for the ride and all of a sudden I got notice. Uh, we received the notice and I said, guess what? Um, they got denied. The application was denied. And I said, okay, we're good to go. Let's, uh, let's just jump in. He said, no, they pushed me back. And I said, you have to wait for the process. It's about 30, 40 days. Then they have to appeal. And I said, okay, they're going to get their act together. So forget about it. So then I said, no, go for the ride. And what happened was after uh, 30, 40 days, we got the nod and said that we got accepted. So we first was to get your license. So the FCC allows you about 36 months to get your, um, to be on air. Once you get your license, you have to have a construction permit, as they call it. So at that time, we're just trying to find out who we were, what we were, and uh, what we were about at that time. And I was in between jobs. So about 2014, I started partnering up with individuals and organizations trying to find out where we're going to go with this license. So about 2015, we finally decided we ended up at Becker College. So Becker College gave us a space, and so we started exercising their, their location. And they gave us a media studio similar to what this studio that I'm in right now. And it wasn't even occupied for two years. I'm right. kind of surprised to hear you went from TV to Internet radio. For some mm -hmm. reason to me, I think radio and then go to TV. But mm -hmm. it, tell me about the process there. Oh, sure. But, but 1994, when we first started, and at that time... Uh, I was working at, at a cable company at the time, and I was selling cable advertising. And so what I wanted to do was I was a champion. I was being a community leader for young people. At that time, there was a rough time in Worcester. You know, gangs were, were rumored to be coming into the city of Worcester. Uh, Worcester was in denial and, and reference to their gang activity. And so I was wanted to go out and champion and say, hey, by the way, give these youth an opportunity. Give them a voice. I was in cable. I was doing, doing television production. I was writing scripts for um, businesses and, and, and advertising the local businesses. I just graduated from college uh, from the Holy Cross. And so I wanted to make a difference in the community. But what was interesting was the community was not accepting me as far as they said, Ernie, we, we enjoyed you playing basketball and we had season tickets and you were great. You know, but coming into the community and trying to champion for these young people, and especially the element that you're trying to support, uh, we're not about that. And they would tell me. And so mm -hmm. there was a number of different meetings I had to go to, a number of different um, uh, challenges I had to go through. 
And so it got so bad that the city council in that district tried to change the zoning laws so I would not operate an organization. So think about that. Huh. You're trying to open up a restaurant and trying to open up a business in an area that's zoned for that particular entity. What were they so negative about? They were afraid. They never saw a six, nine uh, African-American person walking through the neighborhood talking about empowering youth in that particular community. And they were like, I, I felt like it was a modern day Martin Luther King at the time, you know? Yeah. And so, and they wrote about it. And I worked at the cable company. It was interesting. When I came into the cable company the next day, they said, and all the, I would walk past all the customer service reps. Oh, heard about you on the radio. Oh, saw you on TV. Oh, uh, you know, uh, see what's going on. And at that time, the sales department never complained. I brought in money for them every month. So they said, as long as you're bringing in money and, and, and not interrupting that, they said, go out and do whatever you need. So I did that for a number of times. But after a while, I started gaining momentum. And what happened was the following year in 1995, I received an award. And so I had a gentleman call me. And the gentleman that called me was from the Telegram and Gazette at the time. And he had a strong accent, and I couldn't understand what he was saying. So think about it. I just told you that you know I was getting a lot of opposition at the time. I was being uh, written about. I was being recorded on radio. I was on television at the time. And so this gentleman is trying to say to me, we're trying to recognize you at this award. And I barely, I, I practically hung up on him, you know, <laughs> like that. So he calls back immediately and says, did you hang up on me? And he had this very strong, uh, I, I, I'm not even going to pretend what country he was from. And uh, he says, I think I did. I said, yeah. And I said, who are you? Well, come to find out he was the editor-in-chief of the paper at the time. And they have a, an award called the Visions 2000. Hmm. And so he wanted to recognize me. And there's another different categories in that, in that award as well. And so, okay, I believe what he said. And so then I got recognized with that award, with our organization and other individuals. And that was my first introduction to Mechanics Hall in, in Worcester. And so um, it was a Young Leader Award. So it was kind of interesting how the year before, a lot of challenges, a lot of not being accepted in the community as far as the work ethic goes. Then all of a sudden you're getting recognized. So Senator Kerry at the time was the um, keynote speaker. And then it took off from there. And then after that point, um, the cable company I worked at allowed me to create the show and so then we started airing on our local access and we started airing on the local origination tv so at that time greater media cable which is now charter communications we had what they call channel three and so at channel three we had um, worcester and 22 surrounding towns so there's, so we had a half an hour show and i thought the advantage of having the show at that time with the television was the fact that even though we were walking the streets and going from build, house to house and building the building and trying to make a presence in the city uh, on television uh, we put our mission on there in that half an hour if they liked us it was great. They watched it. If they didn't like us, guess what they did? You can just turn it off. So I wasn't a threat to your property taxes going up and the property <laughs> values going down. I've heard it all and everything yeah. at that time. And so then so we was, evolved. What was you, you said, and that's where it started. Like, what was it? What was your, were you bringing the youth on and featuring them or giving them a way to, to learn the equipment? Because I remember you said yeah. something about having them come in and use the equipment. Well, after 94, we incorporated the 95 received the award. Then what happened was we created what we called Youth Unity. And at that time, we were taking the op we were offering the opportunity for young people in the community to um, create their own show. And so it started at the Boys and Girls Club. And it was interesting because at that time, the Boys and Girls Club was losing their teens. In that particular area in Worcester, most of those teens grew up as almost infants uh, at the Boys and Girls Club. They were there for a long time. By the mm -hmm. time they're 14, 15, they're grown, they want to see other different things, and they want to enter into other things in their lives. And so the Boys Club, they worked with me because I was keeping that audience in. So that's when we started Youth Unity as a TV show. Mm. And so we would go to the local Axis in Shrewsbury, and we would tape out there, and then we would come back and we would practice at the Boys and Girls Club. So we were transporting back and forth, either A, going to the studio, and I had a, a student out in Shrewsbury uh, at that time who would edit and also shoot the show. And then back in Worcester, we would practice at the Boys and Girls Club, and that was the start of the show. Give us an example of like what a show was about. Well, the sh uh, that was interesting because the show, uh, we traveled from Worcester. We went as far as Atlanta to the MLK uh, Memorial. Uh, we went as far as Boston. And, and we would introduce uh, the show to uh, individuals and organizations that, that we would try to dispel all the myths about youth. And that was a perfect opportunity. And so what would happen is basically we would go to different high schools. We would go to the colleges. We would go to all the different areas. We, got, we were involved with music. We met Danny Glover at one time. We've met a number of different uh, Run DMC. We met, met a number of different stars. Uh, we were invited to a number of different events. And so after a while, we built the reputation. They were called at that time the positive posse. And that came out because at that time, negativity was um, connotation was associated with posse, when, when associated with gangs. So we call them the positive posse. And so I gave them a microphone, gave them a camera, taught them how to speak, how to, how to do um, presentations, and how to um, do public speaking. And before you know it, I led it at first, 
But then after a while, when they saw me, they tapped me on the shoulder and said, okay, we can do it now. So I turned on the microphone to them and they started leading and we taught different exercises on how to introduce yourselves to different people. And that was, that was the start of the show. Ooh, and we met everybody. It was awesome. Give me an example of something that they did to show how to introduce yourself, because I'm all about okay. building business relationships, making good, oh, yeah. good first impression. Right. Well, what would happen is, is we call it a high pressure situation and a low pressure situation. Now, the low pressure situation is the fact that the person's not going anywhere. They're going to spend some time with us, and they're going to allow us to perform the interview. So we have a simple. Uh, it would be like the student would have the uh, the microphone. They would do what we call open, and we'll point the microphone to the to the guest, and it'll be like open question close and so then that, that would be the end of the exercise at that point but now if we had another question once they felt comfortable they would go open question answer question answer close and then we would to teach them if they had two people there open question answer question answer close and so once we get those basic principles down and then what will happen is then to teach that person we would have their peers uh, in the group as well and so we would come up and ask you, okay, what is uh, the background of, we'll say, who this individual is? And they'll make up something. And the person that we're practicing with will say something that they like. So they say, well, I want to be a fireman one day, so I'll, I'll pretend to be a fireman. So I'll ask the audience, what questions should we ask that person? Say, oh, why are you interested? Uh, what made you become, uh, why do you want to pursue that as a career? Uh, what education do you think you have to pursue? And so now the person who's going to perform the interview will take those type of uh, questions from the audience uh, and when we're practicing and ask and ask them go through the exercise. Open, question, answer, question, close. They will start with that. And then after a while, they get comfortable. And before you know it, the questions and the questions and the answers will go a little bit longer. And then we'll learn how to do it with two people, three people, so forth and so on. And then after that, uh, then now the high pressure situation is we started meeting celebrities. Now the celebrities would come up and they would come up with their assistants and say, okay, you only got 30 seconds and that's it. So I ask your best question. In some instances, we were like uh, we were on the bench with the Harlem Globetrotters at the Centrum at the time, which is now the DCU Center. We were actually sitting on the bench, and they would ask questions. So we go question, so uh, question opener, question answer, question answer, question close, and so. That, then that person would probably get called off the bench to go into the game. Mm -hmm. And we were actually at the, uh, at the arena when the game was taking on place. So those are different situations. So the hardest part for that individual is when they're in the room with their peers, um, that was the hardest part because they're in front of their group. But once we were able to convince them to be comfortable, when they went out into the field, um, they were very comfortable and they were able to tackle on all the different challenges as far as trying to interview somebody. And, and you say, well, what about the starstruck people? Because youth are very impressionable and they see their favorite you know, celebrity. And so I would dummy this thing down. I would grind them and work it to the point. By the time we did the research and by the time we practiced the interview and by the time they, they saw the actual celebrity, it was nothing. So mm -hmm. they weren't as excited anymore, which I wanted them to be. And, mm -hmm. and, and the celebrities respected that. And so I would, one of the prize questions that took place was when one of our students asked a Harlem Globetrotter a question and the Harlem Globetrotter said, that's a very good question. I was never asked that. And I was so excited about the fact that that person said that. Because think about it. Glob Globetrotter, traveling around the world, has been asked a zillion questions. And all of a sudden, my student was able to ask a question that they was never asked before. Mm. So things like that. And so we went, we went, and then we were constantly reinventing ourselves. So we did the show. And then before you know it, we, had, we started raising money for equipment. And so we started teaching them how to edit. We started teaching them how to shoot their own programs. And then we started offering job opportunities for young people. We bounced around a couple of times in the city of Worcester. And it just grew. And then by the time we got to about 2010-ish, so that's when the challenges came in. So we shut down for about three years. And that's when we, uh, the opportunity for internet radio came up. And that's when we pursued it. So we're going to go back to the video. But right now, um, internet radio was our base of getting going. Now we have our license. And uh, we're in 102.9 FM. But what's interesting is now we're about to move. We want to move from our location from um, Paxton to downtown Worcester. The FCC won't allow us to make that one move completely, so we can only go halfway. It's a lot of FCC talk. Hmm. So we are going halfway. We, we rebuilt the, uh, our location again. So we're about to introduce another number, 97.9, and also it's going to allow us to increase our wattage and our power. Now, why does the FCC have so much to do with where you can even physically be? Well, there's a lot of communications that are out there today between cell phones and, and the tower uh, and, and the airplanes and, oh, and, and a lot of other different things. And, and the basic principle is the higher you are, the less wattage they give you, the lower you are, they allow you to increase your wattage. Well, our license is 400. We're only using about five watts of it. 
so the engineer reconfigured and realigned us on the on the channel. And we want to uh, we want our power to uh, be stronger. So traditionally, LPFM is supposed to be like maybe five miles, maybe ten miles, if that, uh, depending upon where you are. But now with the, the landscape of media is changing, especially in the city of Worcester. We're taking the opportunity to go to the next level, and hopefully, we could be a major player in the city of Worcester. So, who is a demographic for you? Who are you looking? For? to target to actually be on to be on the show mm -hmm. and to be watching the show or listening? That's a very good question because right now, which is interesting because now that we've introduced ourselves and we're starting to, we grew out of Becker College and we moved downtown. So that's the studio that you saw. So now we're 102.9 FM. And what's interesting is along our travels, we had a golf tournament uh, fundraise a couple of years ago because we, once you get the license, it doesn't stop there. You get a construction permit. So of course you have to raise money to get the antenna built, you have to raise money to get the tower built, you have to raise money to get the transmitter. So we were fortunate enough in 2016 to get the, um, the transmitter, actually 2017, to get the transmitter. We had a golf event and we raised the money and we were able to install it. And then in 2017, that November, we, we, we featured our first on-air broadcast. We were excited from the Worcester, Worcester City Hall. We did the elections. But at that time, like I said, the landscape of media was changing. So a lot of the major players at a lot of the media outlets were losing their jobs, unfortunately. But that was a, a loss for them, but it was a gain for us. So they needed a home. So we have a gentleman named um, Hank Stoltz who joins us from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. We have two city councilors from 10 to 12. And then we partner with a newspaper called Worcester Magazine. So the, the question was, like, as you said uh, earlier, as you asked earlier, how did you do all this? Well, what was interesting was that was the same question that was asked to me about starting a radio station. What are you going to do with all this time? You got 24 hours. You have to fulfill programming. Guess what? We asked and we walked around and uh, we introduced ourselves to different individuals. They needed a home. We had the home. And then after we had our broadcast, and before you know it, we had plenty of hosts and the programs just developed. We well, even have the chamber on with us now, too, as well. To your point about the creativity, you know, there's so many people who want to do something, but they mm. would never start the station, but they'll come and do a half hour show mm -hmm. or they do an hour show. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like when I'm doing purpose driven marketing, there's a lot of people who want to be a contribution. Oh, yeah, they want to give back, they want to volunteer, mm -hmm. they want to donate, mm -hmm. but they don't know where to start. Right. Mm -hmm. So when somebody actually create something, right. they'll jump in and they'll help lickety split. Right. It's the same and, thing. And that's what exactly what happened. And we were very fortunate. Now, don't forget, this particular host that we've had from 6 to 10 a.m. right now is a host that's been around Worcester for uh, 20 plus years. And he has a uh, he has a huge foundation uh, as far as um, his history uh, in the community. And he's very trustworthy. He's kind of like the Walter Cronkite, if you will, with all the respect of the community. And so I, I know that we were credit worthy because now Worcester Magazine came on with us. And then the Worcester Chamber of Commerce, uh, Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce came on with us and underwrites with us. The Worcester Railers are on with us now. Uh, Mass Pirates, we have a sports show. Uh, I just created a show for myself to, to go out and talk about the community because we were kind of top heavy on the politics and the economics. And I built the station really for the people and the people of the voiceless. And mm -hmm. so we entertain that as well. And so the station is growing. And then as recently, as you know, some of the media cuts across the country, as well as local, it's just increasing our presence, and as I just said, we just recently built our new antenna for 97.9. We're going to test it. We're going to introduce it in several weeks, and then once we get that, and then we have to sit there for a number of, several, a number of months. We're going to go back to the FCC, and right now we're negotiating to go downtown Worcester. Once we get downtown Worcester and get on top of the tower, one of those tall buildings, like 20 stories, after that, it's going to be a wrap. I feel we're going to have a mainstay. We're going to have a great signal and strong presence. And we're going to have a we're going to have a huge presence in the city. You know, I, I always have to ask this question. And I hope other people are as interested as I am. I always wonder how do you monetize that? Like mm -hmm. ultimately, yes. okay. you know, you get mm -hmm. donations and you had to get money to build mm -hmm. the tower and all, and you got to get paid. Right. Mm -hmm. You got big shoes right. to buy. <laughs> That's good too. <laughs> well, what's interesting is that, that you should say that is is I sold cable advertising at the time, and I don't. I have the opportunity to kind of sell, but it's a different language when you're nonprofits. It's called, um, what is it called? Oh, it's, it's called uh, sponsorships right now, right? You have to underwrite, okay? You can't, quote unquote, say advertise, all right? But it's the same thing. You have to go out, and what's interesting too is, is when you put together the underwriting uh, a package, you put the, we'll say it's 100 bucks a week, but we'll give you 25, no, we'll give you 10 commercials a day and rotate them in. Not like the bigger agencies or organizations where you have a traffic person who schedules them on, schedules them off, and then you have all these different networks, because I sold for different networks uh, for, for the cable system, CNN, USA, so forth and so on. You don't have that capability. You can only do like a, a package, which is which will be more effective for your time too and for that individual. But if you go out and convince people to say, look, we got a great medium, we have a great message, and look at all the people that are on. So you kind of sell on merit, 
mm. uh, in this particular case, and it can monitor, monitor it. I don't make a living on it per se right now. I have a full-time job, but I have enough money that covers the expenses, and I see the goal at the end of the, at the, end of the rainbow there as far as growing the station. I feel comfortable enough, whereas after watching Shark, Shark Tank enough times, I think I'm going to be one of those contestants uh, or those individuals that at the end, that a uh, number of people are going to call us and say, hey, by the way, Ernie, we're interested in, in sponsoring some shows and some programs, and let's do, a, let's do an agreement. Like, for instance, we had the Worcester Red Sox coming into town. They just had the groundbreaking ceremony. Um, uh, Worcester Magazine, even though I said we have a partnership with them, they just el eliminated Worcester Magazine now. So that makes more share for us now. Uh, mm -hmm. we, uh, we still have an individual that comes in and kind of represents them, but they lost their whole staff. So there's a future for our station to grow. Um, because of, because all the development is going on in the city of Worcester, you don't want it to be the best kept secret. They have to have a medium there to tell the story. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though that pretty soon at some time uh, when they start, actually it happened as early as recently, uh, a company called me out of Boston and they are um, interested in marketing mortgages to um, uh, middle class individuals or those are having trouble getting mortgages. And I was like, uh, I said, who are you? And they told me a company called NACA out of Boston, NACA. And I was like, are you trying to sell me a mortgage or you want to use the station to, be, as to promote and, um, and reach to the people? Well, that's what we want to do. And we're going to be at the DCU Center. So the mayor told us about you. And so told us about your station. So we want to come to your station, come to a show and promote our, our product. And so that we can let people know that we have a service that people should take advantage of. So that's a sign right there. And mm -hmm. then we, just, we recently just got a transmitter back for our new, our new location. It was faulty when we first put it together. So the owner called me recently and personally from London to say he fixed it personally. He wants to see, he likes our vision, he likes our mission, and he wants to help us. So that's how we survive. Mm. People like us, just like yourself, how I met you through a mutual friend um, back in so uh, uh, several months ago, several weeks ago, and that's how we're here right now. People, if they know what you're doing and they know where your heart is, they'll come right out and they'll support you. So for people who are watching and tuning in, once again, you know, who could reach out to you to be on your show, Unity mm -hmm. in the Community? Mm -hmm. um, and it, you mentioned five miles, so it's maybe a five-mile radius. So what is your demographic? So if I was a business in that area, sure. if I was the mortgage company, mm -hmm. and I wanted to reach, how many people would you say are listening in? Like, what is the demographic? Well, it's interesting because what's happening is how they measure now is different from before. In the past, when you had radio, uh, there was a number of different, I would say there was, you have your, your NBCs, your ABCs, and your CBSs, and you had your major brands. And so, of course, they would cover a, a 25, 35, uh, maybe 50 mile radius with a strong signal, and they, and they just blanketed everybody. Radios listen to differently these days, just like cable TV is different. You have so many different channels. So how we measure is when we do Facebook Live, you can tell how many people come on. Also, we rebroadcast a lot of our programs on our various different social media platforms of that nature. And so people may hear us in the morning, uh, but we rebroadcast our, our programs in the afternoon. So when they go to work in the morning, they hear us. And if they miss something, they catch us back in the afternoon. So it's hard to determine who's who is what. But how we have it is we look, we look on the views and we look on the responses and we look on the shares as far as on the on the Internet goes on our different media platforms. Then we know that people are out there and, and it's all content driven, too. If you got some content of interest for people, mm -hmm. then they're going to respond. If you don't, then they're not going to respond. So. Well, I know since I've met you, the people that I've just been drawn to and in, introduce you to are people who are part of the unity in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, my my uh, my my friend and client, Lisa Casillo, who mm -hmm. is doing big things with with all kinds of different boards and communities. And of course, I'll be introducing you to uh, to Raquel Knight, uh, who Thank has you. the one child um foundation. So I just feel like I want to introduce you to people who are doing things in the community. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah, of course. And that's how, and that will help us. And I think it goes back to what we talked to earlier is I'm out busy tuning everybody else's horn. All right. And not really talking about the station per se. And with the understanding and hope that it boomerangs back and people will say, well, how'd you hear about this brand? Oh, you didn't hear about Unity Radio? You didn't hear about Unity in the Community in that TV show? And as recently as uh, uh, yesterday, we're getting inquiries already about people that want to be on the show. We have a, a Prudential Life Insurance person that wants to do the tip of the uh, week. Uh, and another com A family came rushing in the other day when we was taping a show. I've never met them, but they had something on their heart, and they had their, their two boys, and they said, well, we're interested in uh, speaking with you because we saw what your station's about and what your mission's about. And so we have uh, we have a fourth grader and an eighth grader, 
and they were um, very um, uh, they were inquiring about the challenges that took place in Africa about when the Ebola was affecting mm. the people. And so their mother explained what happened. So it was, they had something on their heart and they want the rap. So I said, oh, by the way, I'm the MC at the Out to Lunch uh, event taking place at City Hall tomorrow. No promises, but we'll see what happens. I was able to get them on and perform. You should have seen everybody just came out with their phones. Everybody came over and just hugged them. And everybody just wanted to work with those individuals. And they had mm. such a powerful story. Mm -hmm. And it was heartfelt, too, as well. And then after that, well, another opportunity opened up for the Canal District Music Series, which is happening at Kelly Square in Worcester. So I said, MC that event. So what we do is we take our sign, we go there, and we work with individuals, and we say, just come on the station, come on the station, come, knowing the fact that they're going to advertise and say, listen to the station and with growth. And after a while, they're going to say, you know something, we want to do more with you. And that's when the revenue, I feel, is going to come. What's next for you? I think what's next is basically is, is to turn on the 97.9, uh, see what the reaction is going to be. And my real goal is to get downtown and get on top of the tower and get the signal really strong so it reaches a lot more people. Then once we, then we're a major player in the city, and then it'll be interesting to see if the city manager, uh, who comes on every week, the mayor, who comes on every week, and then, as, as I mentioned, the other sports teams, uh, will start taking us a little bit more serious. Not to say they don't, but they're showing up and they're appearing on the station. And I'm also taking advantage of the fact that they don't have a great relationship with another uh, uh, medium there in the community because at the time negativity sells and the city is turning it around and now the city is saying look uh, it may have been negative due to the lack of or due to the leadership at the time but times have changed and you're still talking negative and so they're not visiting that station but they say okay we'll visit unity radio and then we're growing something there and so i hope that the station will follow not only with the support but it will come financially as well and so that I can go out and do some more good work in the community so in the last 60 seconds or so of the show, mm -hmm. what would you like people to know? I'd like people to know unityradioma.org. So once you said, like you said earlier, the signal is about five or 10 miles, if that, but go on the internet, see what our services are, see how you can donate or you want to get involved. We're looking for people that want to teach us how to do social media. And also we created a youth group, part of the station called the Alliance Media Group. So we want to take high school and college students to intern with us. We want to extend the station to be a, a classroom to the community. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different colleges and high schools that want to get into communications and they, and they perform it there at their particular school. I'm saying come visit our station, get out of that um, uh, those four walls, come to our station to actually be on the air, actually produce actually promote programming and actually be a part of it and then this would be a good resume builder for yourselves and be also be a resource and tool for us to help promote our mission well and it's just so true that when you get on you get on the stage you know even if it's a Facebook live mm -hmm. it helps the person to get out of their shell even mm -hmm. like with my clients when mm -hmm. I when I talk them into doing a Facebook live mm -hmm. it isn't that their business is going to be built on Facebook with this Facebook <laughs> right, live yeah. it's the fact that you'll take the action mm -hmm. to just show up and right. be present I want to thank you thank you Bernie Floyd for showing up and being present thank you for being on the happiness jungle thank you for allowing me to be here it's, You're a, welcome. Pleasure. Bye -bye. it's a pleasure thank you The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.